come and to open us in prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's all stand up and just pray and press in. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Jesus is in this room. Jesus is here. He is King. We're going to usher Him in. And like Nia Suri said, we're going to let go of anything that lies behind. We're going to press into what lies ahead. King Jesus, you are welcome in this place. Have your way in every corner of our hearts. Have your way in every corner of our minds. Have your way in every corner of our being. Holy Spirit, go ahead and touch the worship. Go ahead and touch the speakers. Go ahead and touch Light UK. Go ahead and do something you've never done before. Go ahead and move the way you want to move. In the name of Jesus, you are welcome in this place. You are glorified in this place. Thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon every speaker, that your hand is upon every person in this room. Thank you, Lord, that your heartbeat is what we're after. Your heartbeat is what we're after. May we feel your heartbeat. May we know what you're after. May we know what you desire. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
this time of prayer. I hope you're all blessed today and it's good to see all of your faces. So we're just going to start the night off by sharing some testimonies. So I'm going to invite our sister, Monet, to come up and to share a testimony with us. Okay, Monet is not available right now. Okay, she's coming. Okay, we're going to invite Monet to come and give her testimony. Um, so we're just going to quickly testify about a mission trip that we just came back from, from the Netherlands. So I was with Mane and we were blessed to be joined with Prophet Timothy and Prophet Nia Saris. Um, such a blessed time and we were just, we encountered so many people and so many people encountered the love of God. So we just wanted to testify about our experience there and how we saw a move of God like never before. So last week, it was literally last week or two weeks ago, we went to the Netherlands and honestly, like, I didn't know what to even expect as I went there. I didn't know what I was going to see. I didn't know what it was like. I've never been on a mission trip before and evangelism was something that I was quite uncomfortable with, but God really, like, took me out of my comfort zone and we went to the red light district where we encountered sex workers, prostitutes, all types of people and we literally saw so many people give their lives to Christ and it was such a blessing. So many people encountered Jesus. About 45 people actually gave their lives to Christ and over 100 people encountered Jesus. And it was honestly such a blessing to see. We even got the opportunity to go into different homes and we spoke and we ministered to people with disadvantaged backgrounds. We distributed packages to them, vouchers and everything. And so many people opened up and they shared their stories with us. We were able to pray for their healing. People gave their lives to Christ as well. And honestly, it was such a blessing to see salvation. And yeah, we just wanted to share a bit on that. And Renee, who actually only joined the Plug International a few weeks ago, decided to join us on the trip. Um, she literally booked her ticket the day before. And Renee's got such a beautiful story to share on how she just stepped out in boldness, um, how her life changed. And yeah, I'm just going to pass the mic to Renee. Thank you, Kansola. I want to honor Kansola. I literally, she was incredible on this trip. You really stepped out in faith and so many people encountered the presence of God because of her and you were a real support to me as well. So thank you, sister. Um, yeah, so I came on this trip very last minute. The Lord placed it very heavily on my heart. And as we know, when the Holy, Holy Spirit convicts you, it's very hard to, to say no. And when you know his love and his reasoning, you always want to obey. So this was really... Um, a trip where I became empowered and emboldened by the Spirit of God. I learned what it means to really be in partnership with the Holy Spirit and to effectively evangelize. Um, like Consola was saying, we were literally going to people's homes and um, providing food, resources, and we were prophetically evangelizing as well. So people were literally hearing from God themselves. And I'll just give a few examples. There was this one family we went into. It was the grandma who was there, the daughters, the nieces, nephews. And by the end of it, every single one of them wanted to give their life to Jesus. From the grandma, the head of the family, to the youngest child. And the Lord really, really moved mightily. And we really saw with our own eyes how how plenty the harvest really is and how strongly the Lord is calling for laborers and people to just go out and preach the gospel and share the love of Jesus. Um, another testimony I met, uh, we went into the house of a, a beautiful young woman who had a young boy, she was pregnant, um, she was in a lot of debt. And the minute we opened the door, it's like the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit created such a safety. And she just began spilling out and pouring out to us. And she revealed to us that she'd been in so much stress that the baby had actually, the doctors had said the baby was half dead, that there was so much bleeding. Her husband had left her and she had no one. She was abandoned. Um, and by the end of that, when we had finished praying, there was such a change in her countenance. And um, she felt very strongly held by the Lord really held by the Lord. Um, on, in the red light district, we encountered drug dealers, prostitutes, people who had really, you'd be surprised, a lot of people hadn't heard the gospel, the true gospel, the fact that Jesus died for them and he wants to know them and wants a relationship with them. There's a lot of religiosity over in the Netherlands. So we really came in full force to, to um, arrest those spirits and bind those spirits and come against all of those spirits that were at work there. And the Lord really showed up for us as, as we obeyed and listened to his voice. Um, 
And by the end of it, I was just astounded. I was absolutely astounded by what such a small group of people could accomplish. So I can only imagine what's going to happen when there is a greater mobilization of people across the body of Christ. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the trip. That was the little testimony of the trip. Thank you all. God bless you all. Hallelujah. How many of you are just excited to hear what God's doing? Yeah. I believe that Europe has stepped into a new season, a new era, that where the gospel is being preached, it's being preached and miracles, signs and wonders are following the preaching of the gospel because we do not preach a powerless gospel. We preach about a risen king who was the same yesterday today and forevermore amen amen we have a couple of testimonies you know i came all the way from america <laughs> this is my first time in london it's my first time in the uk and i've been blown away by the ground that the lord has allowed us to plow while we are here i mean gina will get up after me and she has been leading our outreaches but we have testimony after testimony of people coming to jesus on the streets all throughout the uk and it's the beginning of what god wants to do in this nation there's a ripple effect that's going to happen sometimes we don't see the full fruition of what God sees right away. But as we're casting the stones, as we're throwing out this net to salvation, it's a life vest and people are drowning and that has a ripple effect. There's a ground that's been hard here in the UK but God is breaking up that fallow ground. He's breaking up that fallow ground because a harvest is about to come forth. A harvest that we've not seen, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God is about to do in this nation. But even just today, we were on the streets and we were sharing the gospel and we encountered these two young boys they were 15 and 11, our youth. How many of you know our youth need the gospel? And these youth were standing there and we just began talking to them. I said, listen, have you ever heard that Jesus loves you? So simple, right? And the older one said, I've never heard that. I've never heard that Jesus loves me. Can you imagine? We were walking past these people every day, you guys. He had never heard that Jesus loved him. So we shared the gospel with them and asked them, are you ready to repent and to turn to Jesus? And they both said, yes, we led them to the Lord's. And afterwards I told them, I said, listen, what God just did for you is rip you out of the pits of hell. And the other one said, wait, I was going to hell? <laughs> but you see, we need to preach the full gospel. Like, yes, Jesus just saved them from their sin at 11 and 15 years old and set them on a new path with a new destiny filled with life, filled with hope, filled with plans and a future. And that is what this generation needs to hear. Amen. Raise your hand if you go to a local church here in this area. Okay, guys, God has called us on the streets, but he is moving in the churches, and that's what's so powerful. That's what's so powerful is churches are coming together and linking arms. The, a couple weeks ago, we were in a church, and they, we, this woman had crutches. She couldn't walk. And we walked up to her afterwards and I was with my friends over here and asked if we could pray for her. And as we laid hands and prayed for her, the power of God filled her body, you guys. For how many years, was it nine years? Since like nine years, she had, had fibromyalgia. She couldn't walk. She couldn't pick up her 18 month old baby. And she was a worship leader at this church. She could barely play the keys. But as we prayed for her and the power of God hit her body, she began to weep. And she said, I know Jesus has healed me. I knew that today something was going to happen. I knew that today something was gonna shift and change. And she threw down her crutches and she
she took off running down the street, running down the street. And she came back inside and she began, she picked up her 18 month old baby. She said, I haven't been able to stand and hold my daughter since she was born. You see, God radically touched her life. And I promise you this, that church will never be the same. That woman will never be the same. She's messaged me several times. She's still healed. And you know what? She's now telling everybody else about her healer. My heart is expectant. My heart is ready for what God wants to do in this nation all and all throughout Europe because I know that I know, you guys, that Jesus is coming back quickly. And I know that I know that there's a window of time right now where the door is open to preach the gospel, that the door is open for people to be saved, but that door is not always going to be open. Jesus is coming back quickly. Night is coming and we get to, we get to labor while it is still day. Hallelujah. I'm gonna hand it over to my sister, Virginia, because I know that these testimonies, you guys, it's gonna blow your minds what God's been doing. Amen, come on. You know, um, we've been doing some evangelism training uh, last last week and today, Jesus at the Door evangelism training with our amazing sister Tamika, who is here somewhere. But we've been, there she is, we've been mobilizing everyday believers, not evangelists, but everyday church goers in evangelism. And you know, today, in one hour, we saw 21 decisions for Jesus on the streets of Ilford. Ilford, friends. Not Africa, not Asia, not anywhere in the world, but Ilford, London, your city. 21 decisions for Jesus in one hour. In the last two weeks of outreaches since we've been out on the street sharing the gospel, just as a very small team of evangelists, we've seen over 130 decisions for Jesus on the streets. And friends, let me say, let me tell you something. The Bible says, go into all the world and make decisions for Jesus, right? Is that right? No, 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 no. It says, go into all the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ. You see, many of these converts, people that have made decisions on the streets, I'm meeting up with them. We're having coffee with them. We're, we're, we're following up with them. We're meeting them for dinner. We're connecting with them. People in London are hungry for Jesus. Not just to make a decision on a street, but to actually know Jesus in relationship. And so we're really plowing, really going after disciples here in London. So I want to encourage you with just some testimonies that have happened even in the last week. In the last week, we've seen Muslims give their lives to Jesus on the streets of London. In the last week, we've, today we saw a Sikh man break down in tears on the streets as he gave his life to Jesus. A Sikh man who was like 40 years old, who'd never heard the gospel, as my sister Monet was saying. He'd never heard the, the gospel of Jesus. No one had ever stopped him on the streets to tell him about Jesus. Probably because they thought, oh, he's Sikh, he's not going to receive this. But he got saved today. We've se I've, se I've seen people in the LGBTQ community in the last week get radically saved one of them I oh, okay one of them I met up with her this week she's coming through into discipleship she won't step foot in a church I invited her tonight she's probably watching but I invited her tonight but she wouldn't come because she's scared to come into a church but she'll meet me for coffee and for lunch outside of the church Listen, we need to really make be the bridge for souls to come in. Okay, so we're seeing many people saved on the streets. 
And really, this is the time for harvest here in the UK. You know, these are days we've dreamed of. This is, these are days that we've prayed for. And, and I want to say this. We've prayed for revival, but I want to encourage you that this is revival. To be seeing 20 people saved on the streets in an hour, that's revival. We're living in revival. And I, I want to say to you that people are open to the gospel. People want Jesus. People want to hear. Let me tell you something that happened on Monday. This is powerful, friends. I went to meet a girl for a coffee, for, for, for a meal. My friend Melina was with me. So I got there, somebody handed me a gospel tract and I said to her, well, I'm already a Christian, but I'm going to give this to someone else today that doesn't know Jesus. So I'm walking into the restaurant that we were going to meet this girl in and I have this flyer in my hand and I see this man and in my head I thought, oh, he's, he's a Muslim, he's probably not going to want to know, but I don't care. I said, hey, friend, do you like reading? He said, yeah, I do. I said, hey, here's something for you to read. It's the best thing you're going to read all day. He looked at it and he goes... Thank you so much. That was that. We go in the restaurant. This man comes into the restaurant and he says, thank you for that flyer you gave me. I've already read two pages of it. I'm going to continue to read it when I get home. So the Holy Spirit said to me in that moment, he's ready to receive Jesus. So I said, friend, I want to share something with you. So I shared the gospel with him. As I'm sharing the gospel, this man starts to cry in the street. Come on. He starts to cry, this Muslim man. I said, my friend, I know you're a Muslim, but do you want to follow Jesus? He said, yeah, I want to follow Jesus. He said, I'm going through so much right now, and you don't understand, but you are an answer to prayer. God has sent you to me. God sent a Christian to this man. And so in this moment, he gives his life to Jesus. And you know what? This man, I contacted him several times on the phone. And guess what? Every time I ring him, he answers the phone. I send him messages. He, he, he's in contact with me right now, coming into discipleship. On Sunday, we were in Speaker's Corner, Hyde Park. We got railroaded into a debate with a Muslim, praise God. So <laughs> in this moment, these two, these, the Christian and the Muslim are arguing with each other. The atmosphere was crazy. It was, it was crazy. And they're having this argument. And in the middle of this argument, there was one man there. And the Holy Spirit said, go and speak to him. He's ready to receive me. Go and give him hope. I went over. I stood next to him while this Christian and the Muslim are arguing with each other. You know, in the middle of religious debate, the Spirit of God is drawing the one soul to him. So in this moment, I, share, I shared with him, I said, hey, you didn't come here to listen to a debate, did you? You came here for hope. He said, yeah. I said, do you want to encounter with God right now? He said, yeah, I do. We took him away, prayed for him. You know what he said? He said, I came, I've come, I've got exactly what I came here for today. And I don't need to even stay here now. He received Jesus in that moment. Let me tell you something, right? You know, the Muslims wanted to debate with me about how the prophet Muhammad is what was spoken of in the Bible, um, which we believe is the Holy Spirit. You know, as they want to argue and debate about whether the Holy Spirit or prophet Muhammad is what was prof prof promised or prophesied, the Holy Spirit is at work. I don't need to debate about whether the Holy Spirit is alive. He's just led a soul to Jesus in the middle of a religious debate. Come on, so every single day we're going out on the streets of London. We've been all over Oxford Street, um, Hyde Park, uh, Marble Arch. We go around the, the local East London area as well. And we share the gospel every single day. And we see people come into salvation. Young people, old people, people of different religious backgrounds. Um, even people in the new age. So I want to encourage you to, to join us for these outreaches. If you want more information, just come and have a chat with me. Okay? God bless you. Amen. So we're going to enter into a time of worship led by Esther. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who shared a testimony today. I was really blessed by that and I'm sure we all were as well. So we're just going to, I just encourage all of you to rise up on your feet as we enter this time of worship. Amen. Just rise up and just start to invite the presence of God and just be involved in this time of worship. Amen. Amen.
Strength to us as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength to us as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You
Bible says in Isaiah 59 14 to 16 so justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance truth has stumbled in the streets honesty cannot enter truth is nowhere to be found and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey the Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there
there was no one to intervene. So his own arm achieved salvation for him and his own righteousness sustained him. I've come here tonight to explain to you that God is looking for intercessors. God is looking for people who will get into the place of prayer. And let me tell you something. It's not about the quantity of people. It is about the quality of prayer. It is about the quality of your earnest heart before God. The word intercession comes from the word intervene and interception, which means that when you intercede, body of Christ, you are literally cutting through where there is hell and where there is heaven at a war and a crossroads. God looks for an intercessor, somebody who rises up and somebody who says, I will stand in the gap and let heaven come on earth as it is up there. God is looking for people who will pray. Because in the United Kingdom, my God, there are so many who do not know God. There are so many desperate for the gospel. There are so many at a crossroads between heaven and hell. And God is looking for those who will cry out and will say, God, give me the nation. God, give me the UK. God, I want this nation as my inheritance. And I will not sleep and I will not rest until I see it come to pass. You see, God is looking not for cute people. He's looking for individuals who will wrestle of prayer. It took only a few disciples to decide we're going to get into the place of prayer. We're going to gather in an upper room. We're going to get on our faces. And as they cried before God, the presence of the living God came upon their heads. The presence of God flooded a room, ignited hearts, changed the course of history in Acts chapter 2. And a remnant, a group of people who chose to pray, went out onto the streets and shifted generations of people. God is looking for intercessors tonight. And I know that many of us are seated in our seats. But after Sarah comes and she quickly shares her heart and her vision, we're actually going to be a unit tonight. We're going to walk around this room. We're going to use the space. We're not going to be like this, sitting in like sardines. We didn't come here to be sardines. We came here to take territory. You don't see soldiers standing like this. You see soldiers marching down the street. So when you come to pray, you're not here to stand still. You're here to take territory. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, we've got an army in this building. I don't care. I don't look at the size. I look at the heart. And that's all God needs. That's all God needs. So Sarah, I want to invite you up. I want you to share the passion of this vision. I want you to share what God has deposited in your heart. I'm happy and grateful to be able to serve you today and be able to be part of this in the little that I know we did this in such a short space of time, but I'm grateful that we can pray for you and be part of this with you. So God bless you, sister in the Lord. And here you go. Take it away. Hallelujah. 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 Did you feel what Nia Sri's preached tonight? Did you feel what she just said to us tonight? That those who have been crying out, saying to the Lord, I want this nation. Let me tell you something. I was, you may be seated. I was born again in 2020. I'm uh, sorry, 2012. 
And immediately, immediately the Lord gave me a desire to preach the gospel. I didn't know what an evangelist was back then. I thought that the moment you get born again, you preach the gospel. It didn't occur to me that there's such a thing as an evangelist because how dare we not preach about the one that we love? Did you hear what I just said? How dare we not preach about, about the one that we love? When you're in love, when you are in love, you will tell somebody. You will tell somebody. You might not tell everyone, but you will say, this is what's happening. This is what's happening to me. And that's what happened to me. I was going out on the bus sharing the gospel. I was crying out to nations. And one day, a year later, I was in a trance for four hours. And God said to me, Sarah, I have given you England for the taking. I have given you England for the taking. And I was thinking, why would you give that to me? I'm a new believer. I don't know anything. And you know what? What's so amazing about Light UK is that this year the Lord said to me, He said to me, Sarah, that word is for you, but anyone you share it with can have it. Anyone you share that word with can have it. So I want to say to you, God has given you England for the taking. If you want to take it, if you want to take the territory, God has given it to you. Hallelujah. So I am just honored. Thank you, um, Apostle and Prophet. I love you guys. I honor you, Nia I honor you. Thank you for this collaboration. I know it's really last minute, but I won't be long. If we can put up the poster for Light UK, that will be amazing. Keep playing. I like that. That feels amazing. So I'm going to share briefly about Light UK. There's so much I could share. I could write a book about what God said about Light UK, but I'm going to share briefly about what God has said. First of all, what I want to say is that many people have asked me, why did you choose the people that are on this flyer? Many people have asked me, why did you choose Dalton and Nia Cerise? Dalton called me one time and he said to me, why did you choose me? And here's the thing, I didn't. Every person on this flyer, I even considered not putting myself on there because the vision is so apostolic, it's so big. I was like, Lord, I can bring someone else up there if you want the vision to carry. So, God, so people ask me, why did you choose those people? And the thing is, I didn't. Once I had the vision, I actually hadn't chosen the speakers yet. Then one day, Dalton, I didn't know who he was. I knew he had applied, but I didn't know him. He then, God said, I want him. Then another time, this was months, months later, near Suri. So I want to also actually say the people that are preaching, it's not by accident. The people that are going to preach, it's not by accident. God has chosen them. There's something they're going to say. There's something that's going to come out of them that I believe God is really going to move. Amen? Okay, so I said to you, 2012, God said, I have given you England for the taking. And I, and I said to the Lord, I, I don't know how that's going to happen. But you see, you know, when God gives you a big vision, sometimes he has to take you into training. So 10, 10 years later, now God shows me. He said, do you remember I told you I have given you England for the taking? I said, yes. And he said to me, now is the time. Victoria said, we are, there's a window where Europe and UK needs to hear the gospel. But not only that, Europe and UK, they're right. And you know, God has chosen us. You are a part of this. Whether you like it or not, I'm including you. God has chosen us. We're the ones that's cracking this ground that is hard. We are the ones that we're cracking it and it's really hard and you can feel all the pressure. But, I, but I've been saying this to our team. We were made for hard things. We were created to overcome hard things. Hallelujah. I mean, it's easy to be sent to Africa. It's easy to go there, but God has sent us here. So, you know, I... Um, 20, 2021, I came back from Tanzania and God spoke to me. Um, I was saying to the Lord, what's next? I actually wanted to go back. I didn't want to be in the UK. I wanted to go back. And God started showing me like UK. God started showing me different things. So God started showing me the gospel going through different, different parts of the UK. God was showing me bridges. He was showing me streets. He was showing me the churches, the prophets, the ministers, the evangelists, the pastors, the churches. Light UK isn't just for the streets. Light UK is for the church. The Lord Jesus wants to break through the church. The Lord Jesus wants to be preached. He wants to be heard. He doesn't want to hear our systems and our prosperity gospel. He wants to 
be preached. Amen. So not only are we mobilizing the outside and we're preaching the gospel and we're doing outreach, but we're also going into the churches like Victoria said, and we are doing evangelism training. We are preaching the gospel. We are telling them about what God is doing. And guys, it's been incredible. So far right now, we have nine churches on board. And already I've been speaking to our church mobilization person. A lot of churches, they already, they want us to come back next year. They're already planning for next year. So what is Light UK? Light UK is Jesus Christ. It's really simple. Light UK is Jesus Christ. He wants to hit your heart so that you can impact someone else. He wants to touch the heart of someone on the street so they can impact someone else. It's really simple. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ spreading spreading through the UK like fire. The best way that he shows it to me, even when we're praying, who was worshiping? Who was the worship leader? Uh, yeah, even, I'm so sorry, right in front of me. Even when you were leading us in worship, I could see rays of light. That's how God communicates to me. I could see rays of light just piercing through every area. And that's where we come in. Light UK is Jesus. How many of you know you're the light of the world? Okay, but in order for you to, 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 for that light to be seen, you've got to do something. You've got to open your mouth. You've got to make yourself available. So not only is light UK Jesus Christ, it is you and me. It's a mobilization of Christians coming together, united in churches, apostles, evangelists, coming together and preaching the gospel. People know me. I'm not interested in anything else other than the gospel. I want to preach the gospel everywhere, and especially for me. I believe believers need the gospel as much as unbelievers. I'll tell you a little testimony. I went to church. I got born again, 2012. I went into church. I didn't hear the gospel for nearly five years. Do you know what I, was, you know what I heard? I heard the prosperity gospel. So God saved me. So the reason why I'm passionate about the gospel being preached in churches is because there are many that are not hearing it. Like Gina said, we preach the gospel, but then we continue to show them what their inheritance is in Christ. Amen. So we're going to have an amazing time. The, the crusade is on the, from the 1st to the 3rd of September. It's going to be incredible. I'm expecting. I want people to come. We've been inviting churches. CFAN UK is a part of it. We've been inviting ministers to come. But you know what? Tamika spoke to me the other day. She said to me, now it's time to have fun. We've, we, we, you know, we're going to continue, of course, doing the work. But when that day comes, when that day comes, when, we, when the 1st of September comes, it's time for us to let the King of glory come in. And he's going to have his way. And whether it's 100 people, 500 people, 1,000 people, 10 people, the King of glory is going to have his way in the end. Amen. So I'm excited to, to hear from all these beautiful speakers. Honestly, it's such an honor to work with, with Dalton. He's been really helpful. I want to honor the team. They've been incredible um, in, my, in, my, in my happiness and in my craziness. They've been amazing. And I just want to honor you guys. I love you. Thank you for all that you're doing. Um, there's a, lot of, a lot of our t- guys, you know what's so amazing? A lot of the people on our team are Americans. That, that's great. Praise God. But that's a problem for the UK. That we're having a crusade and there's more Americans here than British people. So it's time. So I'm excited to pray. I don't know who's next, but I'm excited to cut the ground and let's pray. And guys, I just want to honor you and thank you for being here. And let's see what Jesus Christ is going to do. Amen. Amen. How many are excited to be here today? Come on, shout for Jesus. That, that, that shout is okay if it was for me, but if it's for Jesus, I want it to be a little louder tonight. Come on. It's okay if you're shouting for the prime minister, but if you're shouting for Jesus, shout a little louder tonight. Y'all still sound too quiet. Come on, for the next 20 seconds of your existence, open up your mouth and let him know he's worthy of all praise. Come on, open up your mouth. Let him know he's worthy of all glory. Open up your mouth and let him know that he's worthy of all honor, all dominion, all power. For the next 10 seconds, come on, somebody. Nine. Come on, come on, come on. Eight. Make a joyful noise. Seven. Come on. Six. Come on. I'm 
I'm so excited to be here tonight. I'm Prophet Timothy Bayon. I'm the senior leader and founder of The Plug. And it's such a privilege and honor to be here, to be able to collaborate with this amazing woman of God and seeing what God's about to do in the light UK. I'm so excited. And we, on behalf of The Plug, we're proud of you and what you're doing. We're here to support you. Come on, let's celebrate this woman of God. One thing I preach at the plug, I say that it's, it's the body of Christ, not the member of Christ. And so when the body gets together, that's when revival will break out. And so it's very important that we as a body literally get together and say, you know what? I, I want to know what the different members of the body are doing. And let's collaborate. Let's pray. Let's get together in the upper room. And let's make sure that God has his way and his kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm going to quickly pray concerning revival in the UK. How many of you know that we need revival? revival God spoke to me concerning revival he said Timothy only dead people can resurrect dead things the very first thing about revival is that you need to understand that there needs to be death to yourself so before we pray about revival I want us to pray that father whatever in me that is still alive father whatever in me that is still functioning every part of my flesh of my intellect father that is inhibiting that's pushing away revival in this nation father we ask that you crucify every member of our flesh now I, I, I want you to pray like you're praying for your next car because some of you when it comes to the material things that you need if it's a husband if it's a car if it's a material thing you'll be praying until this whole building falls down so I want you to pray like it's the need you have father whatever that's in me that's still alive every member of my flesh that does not look like you father we ask that to self right now that to our mind that to our intellect father we ask right now in alignment in our minds in our spirits in our souls our bodies father god we ask father god that we begin to look like you come on i need to worship right now everyone open up your mouth father we refuse father god to walk in the flesh we refuse father god to walk according to the man of the flesh of god we declare and decree that it's no longer we that live but you that lives in us, Father, right now, we align ourselves to your ways. We align ourselves to your mind. We align ourselves to your principles, Father God. We offer up ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Let your kingdom come, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth. Yes, Lord. Open up your mouth. Come on. Yes, Lord. praying I want you to have a serious conversation with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit knows you back and forth the Holy Spirit knows the members and the parts of you that are still resisting him I want you to ask Holy Spirit whatever area of my life is still resisting you it's still some of you God has told you to stop preaching the gospel even on your social media some of you God has told you to walk up but because the flesh the flesh in the form of fear the flesh in the form of pride is still there you're resisting God father whatever area of my life that does not look like you today it has to die I want you to open up your mouth come on come on come on let's go in this place fill our hearts with your love your love surrounds us he's the reason Come on, come on. Make it today. 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 Make it today.
open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and you feel it. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and you feel it. Come on. Shapa Atek. says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land I want you to open your heart and begin to talk to your God. Begin to repent to your God. The only way that we will see revival, the only way God will heal the land, will heal the UK, is if the people of God turn from their wicked ways and say, God, use me. He's trying to get us to understand that if you want to clean a land, you first have to clean the people. If you want to transform a land, the people first have to be transformed. You see, God is trying to get us to understand that if we want to move in this thing, first he has to move and flip some tables in your heart, in my heart. And God is here today to do some Listen, listen, listen. Don't tell me you want revival, but you won't repent. Don't tell me you want revival, but you don't want God to restore you. God is looking to flip the tables in your heart that are there. And tonight, He's flipping. So come, worship your God. Ask Him to wash you. Ask Him to clean you. Before we ask Him to move forward, us, let's ask God to move inside of us. My God, my God, will somebody pray?
you to come and pray right now. I need you to come, Dalton. And I want people now, I want you to begin to understand if you're, if, you're, if you're laying on the ground, that's fine. If you're in the presence of God, that's fine right now. But if you're in your seat and you're doing a two-step from side to side, I don't want to see that right now. We are about to pray against the Antichrist spirit in this nation, the Antichrist spirit in this culture, the Antichrist spirit that wants to bring the people of God begin to walk around this building everyone begin to walk around this building use the space use the space because we're about to take some territory I need you drummer to go go for me please go for me please Dalton take us away keys I need you strong I need people to march right now I need people to move right now I need some prayer warriors right now I need some prayer I need some prayer I need some prayer I need some prayer some prayer warriors right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time that I'm going to get there. It's time that I'm going to get there. It's time that I'm going to get there. You know, many people here, there's only three people speaking. But every great movement of God has started with a man or woman kneeling. They may never see your face. Who cares? Who gets to see the preacher? Every great movement of God starts with a man or a woman kneeling in the secret place of prayer. I can see God almost as just how he's leaning out of his throne in heaven, looking down upon London, waiting for a move of God to break out. Amen? I can see almost that God is warming his hands over the hearts of men and women that pray. Hallelujah. There was a young boy. On the London Bridge, he was carrying a piece of paper, and he gave me something. I said, boy, what is this? He said, this is the fire of London. And I looked at it, and it said, it's September the 2nd, 1666. A fire broke out in London. It consumed over 130,000 people's homes. It killed thousands of people. 80% of London was consumed. But I'm feeling there's a fire. It's not a physical fire, yes. but a spiritual fire. Yes. I mean, what's, what's near Cerise was praying is that you can walk down the street, and there are people right now probably in the bars tipping back whiskey, tipping back alcohol. They can blaspheme the name of God. They can blaspheme the name of God left and right. But just down the road here at Elam Pentecostal Church, there's a people that are lifting the name of Christ up high. There is a people that are worshiping Jesus. And this is where the movement starts. It starts with us gathering together with a heart that is on fire for Jesus to be preached. Where a heart is turning and burning for a move of God. Now I'm going to ask my friend here, I want everybody to lift their hands. I want everybody to begin to pray in the Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. If God has given you this gift, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. There's almost like a shift that happens when we shift from the natural and begin to talk in the supernatural. When we begin to shift our prayers from the natural and we begin to seek God in the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Louder, 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 louder. Oh, Oh, Hey, hey, Begin 
to stir the flame. Begin to stir the flame. Begin to stir the flame in your heart. Begin to stir the flame for your nation. Your nation is waiting for you to intercede. Oh, your nation is waiting for you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Begin to prophesy over what God's going to do, what God's going to do in your home, what God's going to do in your heart, what God's going to do in your city. Begin to pray. Begin to speak into existence. Hallelujah. Hey! Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, when I, land, when I landed here, I'm from America, when I landed here, there was a moment for two days of this over, overweight of, of just oppression and darkness. You know, there's three things men will claim in their heart so they do not come to Christ. One is pride, one is self-righteousness, but the third is the most grievous of them all, a pleasure to sin. That sweet, seductive flavor that Satan begins to creep into the heart of a man or woman, that they are so indulged with the pleasure of sin. And tonight... We're going to pray specifically. God is a God of order. Amen. We're going to pray specifically against this anti-culture of Christ. You know, there's a mosque. There's a, there's a tarot card, a witches and warlock thing on every corner we go to. But there is a remnant that is rising up. The Israel army, when David was leading them out, they started with 300,000. And God said, I want you to, to, to put off... The numbers and take it from 300 to 30,000. Then it went from 30,000 to 3,000. And he said in the scriptures that you need to divide the men who lap up the water like a dog and lap up the water in their hands. God is separating people. God's not gonna just look for people who just want to sit on the sidelines. This is not how it works. We're followers. We're not fans. But the thing is, God is looking specifically for people who are filled with the Holy Ghost. Spirit-filled believers. God's just not going to walk through and scoop up the church and send them out on the streets. But it's specifically reverent, remnant people who want to be used by God. It's not just regular, everyday, nine to five people who come. You know, the book of Ephesians talks about there's a five-fold ministry. But people have been adding a six, and it's just a seat warmer. People come in and sit on the seat. But I'm telling you, I could not get the picture out of my head in 1666. Almost two-thirds of the city of London was engulfed in flames, burnt to the ground. But I can tell you, the church is waiting. But this is the church as the outreaches that Virginia was testifying, that you were testifying, that you were testifying, that Victoria was testifying. People are hungry for God. But we must pray against this seductive, immoral, Jezebel, anti-Christ culture. We're not here for anything else. We're here to usher in the kingdom of God. Amen. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray specifically against this culture of sin, against this culture of blasphemy, against this culture of mockery. We're going to pray specifically for the blood of Jesus to wash every seductive, every strip club, every prostitution ring, every, everything with pedophilia, everything with homosexuality on Camden Street when we say we can't preach the gospel because it's lined up and down with LGBTQ men and women. I'm telling you, there is a hunger there is a hunger. There is a hunger. But I'm telling you something. I'm telling you something. Every single one of you carries the bread to feed the people that are hungry for God. We're going to pray right now. Once we're done praying, my friend here is going to lead us into a song called Waymaker. Because there is a way. There is a, there's no method. God does not anoint mechanics. He doesn't anoint the keys. He anoints the man that plays the keys. He doesn't anoint the mic. He anoints the woman or the man on the mic. He doesn't anoint things he anoints people i've never been to london it's my first time in london but i feel like a fire is gonna burn and sweep all over the united kingdom 
So right now, let us begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray against the anti-cultural spirit. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus right now. We thank you, God. We pray against every person, every person who has been fed a lie, a doctrine of devils. Father, we thank you. We pray against every prostitution ring. We pray against every, every single place of addiction to opioid, addiction to fentanyl, addiction to meth, addiction to cocaine, those who are addicted to porn. We are praying against every desire of sin. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for every place that is in business for selling alcohol. I pray you tear it down and give them another way to make income. We pray against every red light district in the UK, every door that a man or a woman knocks on to come in to be seduced by the pleasure of sexual immorality. We pray, we pray against every mouth that has spoken blasphemy yes. against your name. Yes. We pray against every, ever at the parliament. We ask you right now for the queen and parliament, Lord. Yes. I just feel it that you would convict them of sin. Let every legislation, yes. let every decision in the government of the United Kingdom be put in place to uphold the morality of God the standards of the kingdom, the pursuit of the kingdom. Father, for every church that is not preaching the gospel, I pray that you would put within them a yearning and a fire that would come back to the simple gospel that men and women can be forgiven of sin. And Father, as we go into this song as a way maker, I pray that when we sing out, you will make a way in the church. You will make a way in the streets. You will make a way in the government houses. You will make a way in Camden, in Hackney, in Essex Street, Liverpool Street, wherever it is, a way will be made in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes. There's a war going on. Take us away, take us away with that song.
right now is she's worshiping prophetically the next few minutes I don't know how much I want you to actually worship I hear the Lord saying rain coming down I hear the Lord saying fire come, whatever you're hearing and as she's releasing those sounds I want you to tap into what heaven's saying and we pull down the fire we pull down revival we take it by force we take it by force whatever you're hearing worship Church. Yes, Lord. 
We're gonna pray specifically for the bride. And can I say something prophetically to you? I went to the bathroom and the Lord said to me, I am not coming back for a bride in adultery. He's not coming back for a bride in adultery. He's coming back for a pure, spotless bride. The bridegroom is waiting for his bride to get ready. Revival doesn't start outside of the church. Nia Suri said it earlier. Revival starts in the church. There's a purifying. There's a sanctifying. There's a consecration. There's an invitation to holiness once again. There is a removal. As my sister was praying, there's a fire. There's a fire. It's an all-consuming fire. We pray for the fire of God, but do you know that the fire of God is an all-consuming fire? Hallelujah. It is a fire that cannot be quenched. It is a fire that burns up everything that is not of Him. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a jealous God. God, and he's not coming back for a bride in adultery. He's not coming back for a bride in compromise. So can we pray together for the bride? Can we pray together for the bride? And I'm going to ask you guys for a few minutes, let's throw aside all of the planned songs tonight. Because this is not us, this is the Holy Spirit. And I know every single person in this room wants the Holy Spirit to have his way, but I believe that there's a gift of the prophetic on your life. You have a gift to speak forth and to sing what the Word of God is saying to us in this hour. And I want you to know it takes us to a place in the throne room. But I believe that there's deeper tonight that he wants to take us that there's deeper tonight that he wants to take us with your prophetic worship. So, Father, we thank you for the gift of the prophetic on her life. Holy Spirit, let rivers, rivers, rivers of the prophetic flow out of her mouth. Would you burn in her like a fire that could not be contained? Would songs of deliverance break forth for your bride tonight? Would songs
on behalf of the global body of Christ. Lord, we say forgive us. Forgive us for looking at somebody other than you. Forgive us for living in adultery while confessing to love you. Forgive us, God, for when we've shifted our eyes from the eyes of blazing fire. Forgive us, God, when we've not looked to you as the head, when we've looked to our own hands to build instead of building what the Spirit of the Lord says to build. Forgive us, oh God. Humble us at your feet and have your way in us once again. We need fresh oil. We need fresh oil from you, Jesus. We need fresh oil in our lamps, God. We refuse to live compromised. We come against that spirit of compromise in the bride in Jesus' name. That spirit of delay, Holy Spirit, wreck us with an urgency of the hour. Wreck us, God, with the urgency of the hour that our King is coming. Our King. to give you a burden for the lost. I want you to just press in for a few moments and just ask God to give you a burden for souls, a genuine burden that God would break your heart for the lost, that he would show you where they're going to spend eternity without him, that you would ask God to open your eyes, to open the eyes of your heart, just get on, I feel like everybody should just get on their knees for a few moments and just ask God. Just ask God, just, just cry out to God for a burden. Cry out to God for the gift of tears, for the gift of tears to intercede for souls. That God would break your heart as his is broken for souls. Just cry out to God, I want to hear. Everybody's voice is crying out to the Lord. Just for one, two minutes, just press in and ask God for a burden. God, give us a burden. Give us a burden, Lord. Give us a burden for the lost, God. Open our eyes to see where the lost are headed without you, God. Give us an urgency for the gospel, God. Give us a fire for the gospel, Lord. Give us a fire for souls, God. Let us live, breathe. Souls, Lord God, let us spend our days for souls, Lord God. Break our hearts, God. Give us a gift of tears, Lord. Let us weep, Lord God, for the ones that you weep over, God. Lord, give us a burden, God. Give us a burden. Lord God. Break our hearts, God. Holy Spirit, birth a burden right now in our hearts, God. Every heart, Lord God, every person that's on their knees, Lord God, would you give them a burden, God, for the lost, Lord God. Pull their hearts, Lord God. Let them never be the same again, Lord. As Jacob wrestled with you, and he never was the same. He walked with a limp from that day, Lord God. Let every one of us, God, never walk the same down them streets, Lord God. Never look at a lost person the same 
as we look at every person we walk past, God. Let us look at them with broken hearts, Lord God. Let us never share the gospel half-heartedly again, Lord God, but let us share it, Lord, like it's the last thing we'll ever say from our mouth, Lord God. Let us never preach the gospel as an option, Lord God. Let us preach it as the medicine that it is, God, to a lost and dying world, Lord. I pray, God, for visions, Lord. For visions of eternity without you, God. Let us never be the same from this moment. A few years ago, I had a vision. And I saw where the lost go when, when they die without Jesus. I saw what happens when somebody dies without the Lord, when somebody dies spiritually dead. I saw the, the, the permanence of their eternal state. And you know, for years I couldn't share it because every time I tried to share it, I'd cry. Friends, without Jesus, people go to an eternity separated from God, separated from anything good, from from. Any, any form of peace or goodness, it's eternal torment. Not for 10 years, not for 20 years, not for a million years, not for a billion years, not for billions and billions and billions of years, but for eternity, friends. It's worth us getting shouted at on a street corner. It's worth getting laughed at, getting told to shut up, getting told to stop. It's worth it. For them to hear what can save them an eternity of torment. So Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would increase a burden that lasts, God, not just for a moment, but the burden would last, God, that it would increase, that the fire for souls would increase that we would break out of complacency and we'd break into urgency, God, that you put an urgency in us, Lord. I want you to cry out, cry out for a burden. Let that burden, let that burden bubble up in your heart. Some of us here, we've never even realized that we can pray for God to burden our hearts for the lost. Jeremiah was so burdened, he couldn't stop preaching the gospel. He wanted to stop. He wanted to keep his mouth closed. He wanted to run away from the call of God. But he said, every time I do it, his word is like a fire shut up in my bones. I cannot contain it. God wants to give us a fresh burden tonight. Because there's a Muslim woman that needs to get to that crusade. There's someone in their kitchen right now cooking their dinner. And God's looking at that person like, I want your soul. There are people. Thank you. 
a castaway. And it's time for us to get rid of our reputation. Time for us to get rid of how we want people to treat us. Time for us to think, well, if I'm a man or a woman of God, people need to treat me like that. They need to respect me like that. Paul rid his reputation and cast it at the feet of Jesus. He said, I poured my life out like a drink offering. Dalton, Sarah, Prophet Timothy, Joseph, Gina, Consola, Victoria. God is giving us a burden. God is giving us a burden. Thank you, Jesus. Where our hearts have been desensitized, thank you for a burden. In Jesus' name. Helen, you can stay there, stay there. I just want to confirm when Nia, Cerise, and Gina just prayed for us tonight. And you know, a lot of us, we want to, we're hearing this and we want a burden for souls. But now the Lord is saying to you, are you ready to go through a process to be trained by God? Are you ready to do whatever he tells you to do? It's not going to be easy. You're going to get, you're going to go through things to be used by God. You're going to, you, you have to, we have to go through the process. And when the Lord gives you that burden, you know, I always ask myself, what drove the apostles to go through what they went through? Why did they do the things that they did? And the Lord is pulling on you. The Lord is pulling on you tonight because he wants to use you, but you've got to walk with him intimately through the process. Because in order for, you, for, for him to use you to shake nations, he has to build us. He has to grow us. And some of us, we give up too easily. We give up too easily when, when, when challenges come, we stop. We say, oh no, it must have not been you. No, it's of the Lord because he wants to use you. So I want to pray for you, for the Lord to expand your capacity to withstand pressure. When pressure comes, you'll be like a rubber band and he can stretch you and you will still remain standing. The Bible says, having done all that you can do to stand, stand. We've got to stand. Even when our family come against us, we've got to stand for the gospel. Hallelujah. So Father, Lord, I just pray for your people. I pray that you expand their capacity. I pray that you stretch us, Lord, for your gospel. That, Lord, we'll be women ready, men ready to be used by you. That no matter where you put us, Lord, we'll carry that burden until the end. In Jesus' name. Amen. I, I, don't, I want everyone to take this moment that we're in right now as a holy moment. Take it as a holy moment. I don't know what... Joseph is going to lead us into but I asked him to pray prophetically and I really do believe that even as I was speaking to you early it's, it's funny what the woman of God said I literally said I don't know what they told you to worship but scratch that literally what did, when I pulled you in what, what, what did I say to you exactly he said it should be you have a prophetic anointing like let your worship come through like cling on to stuff like catch every moment and come through perfectly and and literally, as you started opening up your mouth, I felt, here comes the fire. I literally, I don't know about you, but I feel fire on the inside of me. And so I really want us to really be, we said that this is not just a prayer rally, but a prophetic prayer rally. A prophetic prayer rally. It's prophetic because we're hearing God's voice and instruction, even concerning the prayer points, even concerning the worship. We're not too emotional that God can't have his motion in this place. So as Joseph leads us in prayer, I don't know what God's going to lead you to pray, but pray as the Holy Spirit leads you. And I really want us to open up our hearts in this moment. This is a holy moment. And I believe that there are angels right now that are taking notes of our prayers. They're taking notes of our assignments. So as he leads us in the prayer, say, Father, whatever that's being released, Father God, let my heart be in tune and let my spirit be ready. Please lead us away. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. 
right now we have been installed with a burden by Jesus. I tell you, Jesus is in this room. And I want us to, if you can, just stand to your feet. Because I want you to understand that you see the scripture when it says the violent take it by force. It's basically when um, there was a moment where Jesus was still on this earth and he was walking this earth. And people didn't understand that he was the Messiah. They thought he was just a prophet. But there were certain people that understood that this man is the man that is going to save eternity. So guess what? Before he died, they tapped into salvation. Guess how they tapped into it? Because they violently pursued Jesus. You see, I can tell you one thing right now. We're in a moment where heaven is going to come onto earth. But we have to violently pursue Jesus for heaven to come onto earth. Guess what? Because Jesus has given us dominion. So we can dominate this earth. So if, I, if you want me to be one that has a burden, but this also dominates the earth of this burden. Come on, start praying. God is raising up an army. God is raising up an army that will have a burden, but will also occupy the land. Come on, we're going into a next. We're going into a season of occupying. The Lord says in Luke, he says, occupy till I come. Occupy every um, red district. Uh, occupy all streets. Uh, guess what? It even means occupy pornography. Come on, who is going to be the people that buy pornography industries uh, to for the kingdom of God? Raman sete la mansoya. Libre lele mensira la manso. Come on, if you want to see God uh, move on this earth, come on, pray. Raman de lele vensuya na la mansaya. Be like, God, use me. God, use me. There's a fire that is coming upon you that you might take it into the world. There's a fire that's coming upon you that you might go into the world. Come on, you see, when we say let heaven come, guess what? You are the answer for let heaven come because God created you in his image that you might walk this earth and you might look like him so that when you go onto this earth they might see you in Mark 5 it says as he came onto the other side that there was a demon that was screaming Jesus Jesus why are you coming here and guess what some of us walk next to demons all day but because we don't have Jesus they can't scream today he's imprinting us with his image that when we walk past demons they and say, why you come to my land? Reman Soyan and Aman say, where are the hungry ones? Where are the hungry ones? Hey, and Aman say, let them see the buyer. Hey, and Aman, they let them be the Yana Mansaya. Hey, and Aman Soyan and Aman Saya. They men see the Yana Man say, the Man Soya buyer. We've not just come to see souls saved, but we've come to see a nation saved. We've come to see nations com comply with the kingdom of heaven. We've come to see governments turn over because they said, why are so many people coming to Christ? Hey, hey. I want to say this one thing. We're going to see souls saved. But there must be a system. A system. And I know this, these people have a system. But you must understand there is a system. That when souls get saved... They must come into an occupying system. That Nisari said it. Somebody said it before. That they're saved and they're enlisted into this army that occupies. You see, I saw the thing was in, 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 in Leytonstone. People will be saved, but not just people will be saved, but systems in Leytonstone will be saved. What am I talking about? I'm talking about schools and laws changing because so many people are saved that they can't uh, allow that to happen. I'm talking about when we see salvation, we're waging a war in the heaven where God can change governments, where God, God can change laws on the earth. 
Can I tell you something, last thing before I go? God can't do anything without you. I hope that takes fear out of you. God can't do anything without you. If he comes onto this earth, he ceases to be God. Because he made a law. Everything, all things, all his words are above his name. All things are above his, all, all his words are above his name. So guess what? When he said, I give dominion unto us, guess what? He can't reverse that. But guess what he does? He sets a fire in Virginia. He sets a fire in Nia Cerise. He sets a fire in Prophet Timothy. That we might go into the earth and we might be fiery ones. That even when we walk into Asda, that Asda is set ablaze. We're, we're not here just to set the church ablaze, but we're here to set everything that we walk into ablaze. I don't know if you heard before, but in Mark 5, it said Jesus was on a boat coming to the other side. The demon was yelling, Jesus, why are you coming? As we go to Leytonstone, we want to see demons come and say, why are you coming here? Because they know who we are. They know the identity we carry. I believe that as, as, I, as I walk past demons, they say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, and Joseph I know. It's not pride, it's understanding who you are. Come on, so for the next 10 seconds, if you want to be one that is imprinted by God, that you might look like him so much uh, that when you walk into territories, demons have to come and say, why are you here? Come on, pray for the next 10 seconds. Open up your mouths and pray. Come on. Open up your mouths and pray for the next 10 seconds. Come on. Open up your mouths and pray for the next eight, for the next seven, for the next six, come on, for the next five, for the next four, for the next three. Esther, what are you hearing? What are you hearing? What, what are you saying to you right now? While she's worshiping, I want every leader of Light UK to come forward. That's a part of this. We're gonna pray right now for every leader. Come forward. And I want everyone to stretch their hands, stretch your hands towards them, stretch your hands. Come like fire, come on, come like fire, send your ring. I really hear the Lord saying, Sarah, for you specifically, as a leader of, of, of what is going on. I really hear the Lord saying that he's going to come in for you like fire. The Lord says that, it, that the Lord says that you, wow. <laughs> the Lord says that I'm about to literally, I don't know what you call the, the thing that you do to harvest. I think it's a sickle. A side. I literally saw fire on your side. And as you went like that, the force that it would take you to harvest the wheat, it was as if like God was allowing you a fire to harvest and you were just going like this. And I saw them dropping right in front of you. God says that as my fire covers you even with the spirit of prayer that's upon you, there's a burning spirit of intercession that's falling upon you right now. God says that it'll be great harvest, 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 great harvest. Great souls, great souls, great souls, great souls. Shapa alabakata, shapa.
Prasoto. The Lord said that from today, that the spirit of might is falling upon you. The spirit of boldness, the Lord says that not only will you plow in London, but you also plow in Manchester, you plow in Birmingham, you plow in Leeds, you plow in Scotland. I hear the Lord saying that not only will you plow even in England, but I saw you with a company of people going behind you, the Lord even putting fire on that, that instrument, and you're going, and you're going for the nation, and more harvest, more harvest, more harvest, more harvest. Father, I release the fire of God right now over her in the name of Jesus Dalton I hear the Lord saying concerning you that you didn't come here on accident you didn't come here in vain but the Lord actually allowed you it's like a trial test and trial because the Lord says that even in the days to come that I'm going to allow you even to burn and, and, and literally it's like you're a trailing blaze of fire even for the nations the Lord says that I've not even just raised uh, I see just such a pioneering all over your life the Lord says that I've called you Dalton even to be a pioneer even to your generation the Lord says that the nations will call you blessed and the Lord says that even and different races, different people from different backgrounds, they will hear you and they will obey the voice of God in you. The Lord says that you truly be loved. The Bible says that the prophet is not honored in his own time, but the Lord says that you will be honored, you will be loved. The Lord says that even I'm opening up the doors, even for wealth, even concerning the different ministries that you asked the Lord. You said that, Lord, how are you giving me a ministry? But I don't see the provision. The Lord says that even right now, even as the fire of God gets upon you, I'm releasing provision for you right now. In the name of Jesus, Kappa, Shapra Asekoto, Shapra Ata, Shate, Eka Ata, Eka Sata, Sheka Tam, Sheka. I hear the Lord saying for you that <laughs> he has called you not just to be a father to your own but a father to generation I see you teaching, discipling and even instructing so many people the Lord says that I've, I'm increasing not just the pastoral but even a teaching grace with great revelation the Lord says that you begin to even minister and even speak in such a way that even the person that can't understand will understand the simplest of the words of the gospel, the Lord says that you make the gospel sound easy, Father in the name of Jesus, Father God I release such a grace for revelation right now the Lord's oh it's burning right now even on the inside of you it's oh shapa ekate a father to this generation a father right now in the name of Jesus and the Lord says that I will honor not just you but your family not just you but your family the fire of the Holy Ghost 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 Shepra, I hear the Lord saying clearly concerning you. He calls you his prophetess. He calls you his prophet. I hear the Lord saying that I put my word in your mouth like fire. Lift her up, 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 lift her up. Lift her up. I put my word in your mouth like fire. And I hear the Lord saying that the enemy has tried to label you everything but not what the Lord has called you into. But even right now as you come into this place, there's a stirring, there's a fire, even though a greater dimension of the prophetic upon you. And Father, even as I lay, oh, shut hey, Lift her up, 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 lift her up. I release greater realms of fire. Father, fill her mouth with a greater fire. Fill her mouth with a greater fire, greater dreams, greater revelation. Open up her ears, Father, because even to hear the force, I hear the Lord saying, even the force of people will be the sun. Fire! Fire! Right now! And a healing anointing even in these hands. The Lord says that, yes, you will heal the sick. Yes, you will bring them out of wheelchairs. Not for your glory, but for his glory. Father, I release that healing anointing right now! Shopra ate prakata. Yes, Sepra. I hear the Lord saying concerning you. There's a grace of teaching, but also the prophetic upon you. And you've been you've been hungry, you've been hungry, you've been hungry. They try they, like it's like they're trying to put you in a box. They're trying to uh, I'm trying to be obedient to that time, but the Holy Spirit said, like, Father, right now, whatever limit that has been placed upon your life. 
whatever limit has been placed upon your life concerning your life and this we release it right now we release you into your prophetic destiny and I hear the Lord saying that your mouth will burn with fire your belly will burn with fire for I the Lord will start putting my words in your mouth not just concerning communities and churches but even concerning nations and the Lord says that you will see the sign when you begin to weep and control the for the nations I'll cause you to weep for nations that are not your own and the Lord says that I'll cause such a burden on you that even as you begin to prophesy and pray concerning these nations God says that I'll start to rest some plans I'll start to rest diabolical plans even in the supernatural realm because of your beats Father I release the fire of God right now over her in the name of Jesus Father God I pray for all of them right now there's such a strong oil on this man's life the Lord says that you're not forgotten the Lord says that you're not forgotten you're not forgotten the Lord says that it seems that your incubation season has been for so long but the Lord says that that he's getting ready to release you in such a way that doesn't make sense and I hear the Lord saying that even right now there's a spirit of boldness and might that's coming upon you because the enemy has tried to even speak concerning your identity and even your ministry but I hear the Lord saying that I'm releasing that lion on the inside of you father I release the fire of God the fire of God even over her right now right now right now right now in the name of Jesus where's Gina where's Gina show park pro satan just the keys Gina I hate the Lord saying concerning you I hear the Lord literally saying, and I don't hear these prophetic words so often. I hear the Father saying, I'm proud of you. Literally, and I, wow, I hear him say, it's like the angels are celebrating your existence. Wow. The angels even celebrate your existence. He says, I'm proud of you. I hear the Lord saying that you're truly loved. You're truly loved. The Lord says that even though it has felt that even man does not recognize what you do but I hear the Lord saying that I am a Lord of hosts for one who made the heavens and the earth, the cosmos and the universe, I'm proud of you and I've called you and I've affirmed you, the Lord says that you don't need to bother about what man is saying concerning you how man has been limiting you the Lord says that I've literally placed fire in your bones, you couldn't even stop even if you wanted to and so father right now I pray for the grace of acceptance even for the nations the Lord says that even in the coming days I see I, I don't know what nation this is but I just see a lot of Asian people and the Lord says that I'll even make you a mother even to the Asians as well Shapra. the Lord says that I've been burning such a hunger in you but the Lord says that the enemy has been trying to put the fear that you're alone the fear that because man does not accept you and credify you or, or, or uh, has not been affirming you that you're not doing the right thing but the Lord says that I approve of you, I love you, and the Lord says that even in the coming days, there will be double for your trouble, not just in the anointing, but the Lord says even in provision, even in provision. So Father, I release the grace and the favor of Yahweh, Yahweh El Roy, the God who sees over her right now. He says he sees your tears. He says he sees your pain, but the Lord says that he's getting ready <laughs> to open the doors for you like never before. Fresh fire right now. Shaprati, Shaka. I think after this, we might as well just end the service. I think this is what we came here for. Shapa, Supra, Shaka, Lepro, Jesus. The Holy Spirit says that <laughs> he's been speaking to you even lately more, not even just as a comfort, but as a friend. But Lord says that you've been asking for more from the Holy Spirit, more, more, more. But the Holy Spirit said, won't you trust me a little bit more? He says that won't you step out into the deep? 
the deep, the deep, the deep, the deep, the deep, the deep. The Lord says that your, your, your steps have been calculated, but the Lord is saying that no longer will I, it will I require calculated steps. But the Lord is saying that the, the realm of miracles, the realms of signs and the wonders that I'm calling into you, the steps cannot be calculated. The steps have to be in faith. For the Lord said, won't you step out into the deep? The Lord says that when you step out, not only will I create the platform, but the Lord says that as you step out, He said, I will sustain you. I will hold you by my hand. Father, I release that grace. The Lord says, also, you are not alone. More support on the outside, even on your inner circle. But the Lord says that you're not alone. <laughs> Father, I release not just grace over her life, but I ask that, Father God, you release a greater realm of just the manifestation of your love in her life, that she might feel the love of God right now. <sighs> the love of God right now. Jesus, touch her. Touch her, Holy Ghost. Touch her. Touch her right now with your fire. And every blockage of fear in your mind, we break it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who's this lady? What's your name? Melina. Where are you from? <laughs> Florida. Father, we pray for this woman of God right now. I thank you for the love that you put in her heart concerning souls. I thank you for the great teaching, anointing, and even the pastoral heart that she has. The Lord says that you weep for sheep. <clears throat> you weep for sheep. You're, you're actually the person that when the one actually goes away, even though there's 99, you will go after the one. But the Lord says that as a result that you've been scorned and that people have taken you for granted, even as because you just love and pour so much. But the Lord says that even right now, the love of the Father, yes, the great shepherd Jesus himself, the Lord says that I'm leading you beside the still waters, Lena, and I am restoring your soul from the fatigue and the weariness. It's like I've seen you just been like weary, like just fatigued by different things around you. But the Lord says that I'm restoring your strength right now in the name of Jesus. Strength over her mind. Strength over her body. Strength. 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 Shaka pro soto. Shaka soto. And even right now, Father, I pray for Prophet, for Prophet Nisaris, Father God. Father God, I pray even right now, even what you're doing for her concerning the nations. I hear the Lord saying concerning you, Prophet Nisaris, that the Lord says that I'm preparing the nations for you. I'm preparing the nations for you. The Lord says that even certain laws have been changed just because of your existence. It's like the Lord himself is going. You know, John the Baptist came to make the way straight for the Lord. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going in these nations and I'm making the way straight for you. Uh, the Lord says that even in the coming days, the Lord says that not only will there be so much travel, but the Lord said that I'll give you so much wisdom even concerning the nations and how the operations work. The Lord says that you will even have favor of the politicians that you will have favor with the authorities of the land. The Lord says that even as you release your, my sound and my voice even through his nations, the Lord says that you will cause even many great leaders, national leaders to fall on their knees to repent. The Lord says that they won't repent in meetings, but they will re repent in private rooms while watching you on the TV. And they ask to call you and say, we want to hear about this God. Father, I just see, I literally see the nation's leaders falling on their knees. And the Lord says that even as it begins to exalt you the Lord says that I'm giving you strength right now for the days to come the Lord says that I am giving you strength not just in your body but in your mind Father God I release the strength of God right now strength over her mind strength over her soul Father even the fire that's in her increase that fire right now right now greater fire greater fire greater fire greater fire God said they won't look like you, but they will respect you. Shapa, bring her up. Shapa, April. 
they won't look like you but they will respect you yes they won't look like you but they will respect you for I will put fire in your mouth and I will put fire in your bones and the nations will know that there is a God because of you save the Lord and the Lord says that I hear your concerns and your requests not just for ministry the Lord says that even in the coming days, just to show you that I'm faithful, I'll begin ticking everything off just like a bucket list. The Lord says, just because I'm faithful, I'm Jehovah El Roy, the God who sees, just because I'm faithful. Wow. 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 It's you and Gina. I, I, and Gina, get on social media if you're not getting on social I literally saw your numbers going like, and I saw your numbers going like, Father, right now, over her hands, let everything she touches succeed right now. In the name of Jesus. Gina, hold my hands. Hold her hands up. Father, let there be such a grace in their social media. Let there be such a grace in their social media, Father God, that the nations hear Jesus through them right now, right now. Fire! Shapa Ase. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Come on, your name. From the rising of the sun. Father, I release the fire of God over these feet. The Lord said that these feet will run to preach the gospel. But I'm even causing fire in their feet, even when the enemy has tried to put shackles in your feet to hold you back because of fear. I hear the Lord saying that, yes, fire in your feet to preach the gospel right now, Father God. Everything that's been holding you back. Restoration not over your mind, but even over your body right now. Yes, great wisdom. Yes, Father, release that fire. Release that fire. Release that fire. The Lord says that you even, the Lord says that. I hear the Lord saying that you will release such wisdom in the coming days. The Lord says that whatever fear was on you, whatever fear that was holding you back, the Lord is breaking you right now. The Lord says that you didn't come here simply just to listen, but this is an impartation of wisdom and boldness over you. The Lord says that even as you go back into whatever you came from, the Lord says that you begin feeling the design just to teach and mother people. And the Lord says that people will come to you and they will request, what is God saying? How can you help me with this, with my boyfriend, with this relationship? The Lord says that I will put the words in your mouth. I will instruct you. I will give you wisdom. The Lord says, fear not because I have given you the capacity not just to follow but also to lead so father right now we release that grace over her life in the, open up her mind every blockage concerning your mind open up her mind right now in the name of Jesus amen what's your name Tosin Shaka Soto Holy Spirit speak Spirit speak. While I'm holding your hand, I'm in a library and I just see full of books. I have a lot saying concerning you that you're in a season of great learning. You, you great learning is like you, you, it's like you, like the Holy Spirit is causing you just to learn and just to learn and just to learn, just to learn. The Lord says that even as I increase your wisdom right now, I hear the Lord saying that not only will you learn, but the Lord says that you'll be a release. Uh, 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 it's like a releasing canal of this great wisdom. The Lord said that even the grace of Daniel is upon you, not just to interpret mysteries, but to be a harbor of God's wisdom. And the Lord says that the wisdom that's within you will confound the wisdom of the wise. The Lord says, do not be afraid even when I tell you to open up your mouth and to release my word. For the Lord says that you're not just learning for the sake of being intelligent. You're not just learning to be well known in your family. But the Lord says that you're learning because I've caused you to even be a representation of my wisdom, says the Lord. So Father, even right now over toasting, Father God, I ask that you open up her ears, Father God, to hear your voice. Even concerning the timings, Father God 
Oh, but like I hear the Lord saying that you're even in the season of transition where you've been like transitioning very quickly, very fast. But Lord says that don't be afraid of this transition for I am leading you and I'm guiding you. And the Lord says that you will see my glory even in this process. The Lord says that even as you obey my voice, even to get great uh, back into a greater position of prayer <laughs> that he's calling you into the Lord says that yes everything that you're learning right now it says the Lord said it will make sense you're asking the Lord why are you having me learn this and having me learn that and having me learn this and having me learn that the Lord said that it will make sense the Lord said not only will you write books but the Lord said that not, you'll sit in boardrooms of, of universities and you begin to teach the great wisdom of God yes not just to his people but to the world also, Father, that I release your fire over her right now, and I release the spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus right now. In the next 10 minutes, I'm, this is going to be very short. I want everyone to, 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 you can stand up or sit down, whatever the Lord is leading. I really feel like Jesus is here right now, so there's no order. I'll be as short as possible. How many of you are blessed tonight? How many of you are blessed tonight? Now, I forgot my laptop at home. I said, Holy Spirit, what does that mean? He said, I'm not trying to make you prepare for anything. I have control of this meeting. I literally forgot, I was like, what Holy Spirit? I forgot my laptop. He said, it's okay. I want us, Joe, if you could just put John chapter 21. And I'm going to be, we're going to be very short. I believe that this message is specifically not just for the plug, but Sarah, this is for you. Light UK, this is for you. I strongly believe that this is for you. John chapter 21. NIV version. And I read, Jesus and afterward, verse 1, and afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. And it happened this way, Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan, Galilee, the son of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. And so they went out and got into the boat, but they, that, but, but, that night, they caught nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, they caught nothing. They caught nothing. And then, this is the part that I really love. <laughs> they caught literally nothing. You know, the Holy Spirit sometimes, I've seen this in my personal life, He'll allow you to catch nothing for a season until you bring Him in. He caught nothing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. Verse 4. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And he called out to them. And he said, Friends, haven't you any fish? You know what verse 5 tells me? Verse 5. He's calling who? Friends. The greatest miracles and signs and wonders in this season will be done by the friends of the Holy Spirit. Friends, have you caught any fish? We want to be preachers, apostles, prophets, and preachers, but God only reveals His secrets to friends. In fact, God is only interested in helping out His friends. He can bless you. But his friends know his secrets. He said, friends. Verse 6. They said, no, they answered. And Jesus said to them, he said, throw your net on the right side of a boat. And you will find some. I hear the Lord clearly saying, Sarah, Downton, every leader of the light UK. Everyone that's here, this is not just for them, everyone that's here, God says, throw your net again. 
Throw your net again. Throw your net again. The enemy will sometimes often make you out of fear to say that, you know, I've tried it so many times. I had my PR team. I've had my marketing team help me out. It didn't work out. You know, I, I, I've been around these people and they know it, but it didn't work out. But, but, but I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus gets involved in the situation, he, he bypasses calculation. He bypasses rules and regulations. And whenever he gives you an instruction, not only does he give you instruction, he gives you provision. So when Jesus said, throw your net. I believe that the God who created fishes, he literally told the fishes, get into that location. The God who made the fishes said, all you fishes, come here. You know, the fishes were in different places of the sea. How is it that when Jesus said, throw your net, they caught fish? It's because the God who created those fish. The, uh, the, now, 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 <laughs> Shaq, listen, listen, listen. We're not talking about fish tonight. We're talking about souls. These fish are the souls Jesus said. He called the disciples yesterday. He said, I'm going to make you fishes of what? Men. And so when I'm talking about fish, I'm talking about men. You've casted your net so many times when it comes to this and that. But the Lord says, now that I'm in the equation, I want you to cast your net one more time. And the amount of souls that will come in in the season will not make sense. Why? Because the God who created the human beings, the God who breathed breath, us, shake us up. He literally said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit looked on dust and said, they, oh, wow, I feel his glory right now. They looked at dust and they breathed <sighs> ruach into dust. And thus became a living flesh. And this same God says, I want you now to cast your net and call these men. Because I, the Lord, will assemble these men for you. It's not to us that assemble men. The Holy Spirit is the one that convicts them. The Holy Spirit is the one that draws them in. The Holy Spirit is the one that leads them to repentance. The Holy Spirit is the one that burns them on fire. The Holy Spirit is the one that keeps them on fire. The Holy One, the, oh wow, wow, wow. We've been depending on our calculations and our fear, but invite Him in the boat. Shapante. This is going to be a very short message. Verse 7. No, verse 6. And when they did. No, he said, For you net on the right side of a boat, and you will find some. And when they did, tap your neighbor and said, When they did. Tap your neighbor again and say, When they did. You know that Sarah, Prophet Nisaris, all of this would have gone to waste if they didn't. When they did, for some of you, it's if I do. No, when they did. When the Holy Spirit is asking you, Monet, when? When, when, when? I really believe that when the Bible says that the God literally looks into the, the, the earth, true for looking for those that went to see it, he's like, when, 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 Mina, when, when? Sarah, when? Prophet Nisaris, when? Esther, when? He's looking for those that will just say, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And the Bible says that when they cast the net, they were unable to haul the net in because of a large number of fish. Now, what does that say to me? What time is it? What does that say to me? That says to me that the disciples cast a net, but they didn't have faith. Because they weren't prepared for the souls. They weren't prepared for the fish because their net could contain them. If they were prepared, their net would have broke. If they were prepared, the boat would have sank. So even though they cast a net, they cast a net making calculated motions, thinking that maybe we're gonna get some little fish. Maybe we're gonna get some small amount of souls. Maybe God's gonna move in this little way. Maybe it's only gonna be a small harvest. God says, cast your net. I will bring the souls. Cast your net. I I will bring the men, cast your net, I will bring
bring them. Now the boat began to sink because whenever God stops into the equation, the Bible says that he is what? El Shaddai, which means that he's more than when God steps in the boat, there was more than enough fish to feed the generation. In fact, they lost fish because they weren't prepared. Let it never be said that we lost souls. That we, Gina, that we lost souls. Doubting that we lost souls because the church was not prepared for the great revival. Let it never be said that we lost souls in the UK that we lost souls in China that we lost souls in India because the church wasn't prepared when God said cast your net are you prepared for this great move of God we're praying for revival are you prepared I hear the Lord saying that in the coming days yes, there will be so much souls that the churches will be packed and they will have to say go to this other church. This is why God is causing union in the body because it will be the case where I'll say don't come to the plug, come to Light UK because we're too packed here. Don't come to Light UK, go to this because it will be so much souls. But we have to be prepared. Are you prepared I'm rounding up I'm rounding up when the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter it is the Lord see they recognized that when the miracles came in some of you, you only recognize Jesus when the, it's the Lord ah it's the Lord now it's the Lord <laughs> it was the Lord when he told you to cast the net and as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed him about towing, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. The question for us tonight, everyone here, Jeremiah, Joseph, are we prepared? Dalton, as much as my heart is burning for revival, I often ask myself, when it comes like a rushing wind, are we prepared? When billions of Muslims all of a sudden say they need Jesus, are the churches prepared to literally have an infrastructure that the must have? These are the questions that I ask myself. We're ending now. My closing word and prayer is that we say, Jesus, prepare me. You can't prepare yourself even if you try it. Or are you C fan, whatever school you've been to, it can't prepare you. I'm telling you, the only person that can prepare you is wisdom himself. I, the Lord, am wisdom. I fashion the cosmos and the universe. I reveal the mysteries and hidden secrets of men. He's the only one that can prepare you. So if you came here, I'm glad you came here. But if you leave this room and forget anything, just remember this. The Holy Spirit wants to allow you not just to be a minister of flame or flames of fire or burn for him, but he wants to burn in you and he wants you to continuously get closer to him and trust him, not just as a Lord and Savior, but also as a friend. In this season, God is walking hand in hand with his friends. Abraham, friend. Noah, friend. Friend, friend, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your children right now. And we ask in the name of Jesus, Father, I repent, we repent. If there's any area of our life, Father God, that we have not bowed down and submitted to you, Jesus, we repent right now, even on knees, Father God, and say, Father God, you can have your way in our lives, Jesus. You can have your way. We trust you, Holy Spirit. 
we rely on you Jesus we rely on your wisdom not our wisdom let your will be done Shapa fill us Holy Spirit correct us Holy Spirit we want to be like you we want to be like you for the next 10 seconds even with your own mouth salvation individual now ask him I want to be your friend Holy Spirit I want to be your friend for the next 10 seconds for the next 10 seconds come on somebody Esther you can worship while they're praying Pray, pray. I'm telling you guys, he wants to be your friend. There are certain secrets you've been asking, there are certain strategies you've been asking. It's because your prayer requests are only because of your necessities. He wants to be your friend. I'm telling you. Someone tap the man in the white shirt. I don't know who you are. I don't know how you came. I don't know who invited you. But all I know is that the Holy Spirit wants to encounter you. You've been running. And the Holy Spirit has been grabbing you in and luring you in. The Lord says that I've called you. And I love you. But the Holy Spirit says that the spirit of fear and confusion and distraction has tried to hinder your life and your destiny but here below saying that even as you came in there you felt that burning fire that you felt ages ago and it's like it's sweeping your heart but below says give in completely to me because I have a use for you below says that I will fill your mouth I will fill your mouth and the nations will be blessed as you exalt the God of Israel father whatever was holding him back Whatever was holding you back, Father, we break the chains of the enemy right now over your life. In the name of Jesus. Listen, before we end, I, 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 when I see people like Gene in this room, I cannot make the mistake to not do this. <laughs> if you are here, if you are here and you know that you know that you know, that you don't have a solid relationship with Jesus. A solid, re I, I didn't say you were baptized at the age of three and you've been attending church your, your whole life. I'm saying a solid relationship with Jesus. If that's you, please in the next 30 seconds, join me here. And we're going to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Come forward, all the way, all the way, all the way. If there's anyone else, please. Being in church does not save you. It's having a relationship with the God of this church that saves you. Join us. From the rising. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. If that's you, join us. I'm telling you. Every day, hell claims a soul. Every day. Come on, celebrate Jesus for this young lady. Celebrate Jesus. Come on. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Dalton, you could join me. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. I want you to actually do the prayer. You can, you can. Guys, hell is grown by the day. If you do not have, I didn't say you attend church every week. I said you do not have a solid relationship. Join us. Thank you. Thank you. Give him a round of applause. Come on. 
Come over way, brother. Come over way. You're welcome. You're welcome. Jesus. I want all the ones who, who come up here, I want you to look at me real quick. This is a beautiful moment. And I know sometimes it may feel like you're singled out, but to be singled out when the eyes of God are on you is a beautiful thing. As my brother here was sharing, this is the greatest moment that you will make in your entire life. This is the greatest choice. It's the greatest choice. It's the most beautiful thing you can ever make. You see, when we, when we step outside of Christ, we are in a pit of darkness. We're in darkness. See, the moment when you go into your room and you flip a light switch on, the light comes immediately. Outside of Christ, we have no purpose. We have no hope. But I tell you that in the light of Christ, that shines within you, within you, within you. But there is a choice you must make. We have to put an emphasis to turn from one thing and to turn to something. When you become saved, you're not just saved from something, but to something. Before you came up here, there was a kingdom of darkness that claimed you. But when you step out to receive Jesus, you are taking a step from darkness into light. To turn from sin. To put it simple, sin is anything Jesus would not do. Anything Jesus would not do. But tonight you make a declaration that when you walk out the room, the moment you walk out the room, it's done. Every chain, every addiction, every desire, whether it be drugs, pornography, fornication, whatever it be, these things itch and nag at the soul of a man or the soul of a woman. But the moment you step in Christ, light comes in. The, it, grace isn't slow, it's fast. Salvation isn't slow, it's fast. You see, this is, I want to tell you something. You probably, have you ever you read the scripture before? There's a word called repentance. Everybody hates that word. They don't like to hear it. But repentance is beautiful. It means to change the way you think. Brother, Christ isn't out to get you. He's out to save you. He's out to put on new clothes of holiness. New righteousness. Same thing for you. You don't have to live in shame. You don't have to live in guilt. The enemy places guilt in your mind and guilt in your heart for everything you've done. That's darkness. But the moment you step out, and the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't say they might be saved. It doesn't say they could be, could be saved or one day will be saved. But the moment you stand here, what's today? Wednesday the 24th of August. What's your name? Wednesday, the 24th of August, Jeremiah gave his life to Jesus. What's your name? Fiona. Wednesday, the 24th of August, Fiona gave her life to the Christ. What's your name? Timmy. And what's your name? Deborah. Deborah and Timmy. You need to mark it on your calendar. For on this day, the 24th, you changed from sin to salvation, from darkness to light. From lost to found, from sorrow to joy, from brokenness to wholeness. And I'm gonna, there's gonna, we're gonna do something. And I want everyone, I want you to lift your hands for me real quick. One hand and one hand in your heart. I'm gonna pray a prayer. This prayer doesn't save you, but the Bible says that if you call out on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. There's a scripture that says, salvation is as close as the words on your lips. And I'm gonna pray a prayer and I'm gonna ask you guys to repeat after me. And it's not in the repetition of the words, but it's in the sincerity of the heart for the soul is hungry and crying out to God. And when you say these words, you're inviting Christ to come in and partake with you. And you are partaking with him. As, as my friend was saying, become, Christ becomes a friend. This is not religion. You can get so full of religion that you can miss the real thing. But Christ is died on the cross for everything you've ever done every sin everything you've said everything you've thought everything you've ever been a part of but when he took the punishment for your sin it's a substitution but when christ died he also rose so the same spirit that rose Christ from the grave is now going to live in every single one of you so the moment you walk out the door you may have come in dead but you will walk out alive in Christ 
For the Spirit will now come within you. The Bible says in Matthew that the Spirit, God longs to dwell in you and walk among you. So we're going to pray a prayer. You're going to repeat after me, but mean it with all of your heart. Can you do that? I want everyone, even in this room, repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I love you. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. Wash me clean. Forgive me of all my sin. Dear Jesus, I acknowledge that you are the son of the living God. You died on a cross for my sins. I now put my faith in you to wash my sins away. That my conscience will be clean. Dear Jesus, you died on a cross for me. You rose from the grave and you are alive today. I ask you to fill me with your spirit. I believe it in my heart. I confess it with my mouth. And I receive it within my soul. That from this day forth, I am a child of God. I am a daughter of God. I am a man of God. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray you bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray your fire would fill him with the Holy Ghost. That I pray whatever addiction he struggled with, when he came into this building, it'd be broken. That fire cleanses, but it also purifies. And I pray right now the substance will not hold him. But right now his mouth would be a mouthpiece. That he would prophesy and proclaim the words and the oracles of God. I pray that when he goes home, that devil will not take a place. That when he goes home, I pray against the spirit. The spirit that tries to seduce him to go back into his old ways of life. But I pray a fresh fire and a fresh flame in the name of Jesus. That it be broken in Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now for this woman of God. I pray that this day forth, she was the first one to come forward. There's a boldness and a yearning and a hungry after Jesus. That, Father, she was a beggar of bread, but now she will be the one to give the bread to the beggars. That I pray right now that there be a fire that would burn deep within her soul. That her feet would tread on hard ground. That she would go to places. That she would walk. I see you helping women who are battered and abused sexually. That there are children. That there are single mothers living in homes. And I see the Lord giving you a grace, not with a charity. But you will be able to raise up women who've been battered, beaten, and bruised. But you will call them out that they will be beloved, blessed, and beautiful in the Lord. That Jesus is going to give you. There will be anointing. The anointing comes upon you to separate you from the world. But not just an anointing, but an approval from God. To not just preach the gospel, but to teach the gospel, the simple gospel. Father, I pray a blessing and a grace on this woman. That a fire deep in her soul. That you've been filling without a purpose for so long. But the gospel is that Jesus has come to take your place of all the filth and the sewage that you've probably been living in and you've been been covered in from head to toe. But there is a purpose in Christ. There is a purpose in Jesus. That from this day forth, you will turn your back on the devil. You will turn your back on sin. You will walk into a kingdom of light. And daughter, you have purpose. For I have called you out and I have appointed you to be a prophetess to the nations, to speak hope and the life to those who have no hope. For those who are bound with sorrow, you will bring joy. For you are not lost, but you are found. I have not forgotten you. I have seen you and I have not forsaken you. So Father, I pray right now a grace on this woman of God. That when the moment she walks out this building, when she lays her head on the pillow at home, you say you give your beloved sleep. And I pray a blissfulness that she is seen 
in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now for these two young women. Father, I thank you for the gift of salvation and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I pray right now, Jesus, that you fill them, you use them and send them out. And I pray that you'd gird up the belt of truth, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. That the moment they walk out here, they know that salvation is a gift that is free. And they have claimed it in their heart. That the moment they leave this building that they will remember the sacrifice of Jesus and the price that was paid and there's a price that can never be claimed on anything else but right now Father I release a grace in Jesus name that you bless them and protect them and send them on their way in Jesus mighty name amen let's everyone get a shout of praise for these people right now in Jesus name amen come on celebrate Jesus come on come on celebrate Jesus come on I, I only see one man celebrating Jesus. I only see one person celebrating Jesus. That souls were saved. If you're excited, that souls were saved today. Open up your mouth. 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 That reaction is the reaction of angels in heaven when souls get saved. I pray that you don't just burn for souls, that you get excited when the souls come in. We're going to enter into the last phase of this worship. How many of you are blessed by today? How many of you are blessed? And I can really say, I pray that we can do more services like this. Um, not just of Light UK, but other churches and other members of the body of Christ. Because truly, if we're going to see revival, we have to be united. We really have to be united. And once again, on behalf of the plug, International Sarah, it's and Sarah and everyone that's all part of the Light UK, we're not just praying for you. But we're believing that God really shipped something great in your lives today. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that? Come on, somebody. So we want to take the time to worship God in our giving. And we want to sow into what God is doing. We believe that what Sarah is doing should not just be prayed for. But also, as the plug, we actually want to sow as well. So I asked God, I was talking to Prophet Nisaris, he said... I, I said, God, what are you having us do? We're literally launching a church. October 16th, the plug officially becomes a church. What are you having us do when you're having us sow into another ministry where we're still launching ours? The Lord says that while you're doing that, I'm taking care of yours. And so today, I want you guys to sow into what God is doing to this ministry because we strongly believe that revival is here, but we have to be prepared. And one of the days that we get prepared is by giving our means, giving our bread and sowing into it so that we can create framework, so that we can pay for the things that are necessary so that this revival, like these conferences, that these crusades can actually happen. And so the giving options are going to be presented over here. I want you guys to sow, not with your hand, but I want you guys to sow with your heart. And while you're sowing, attach whatever you're believing God for in this season to the seed. One of the things about me, I'll tell you a secret about me, the plug started that at least two well three months ago every single time i sow i sow concerning the ministry i could sow concerning the members and literally everything i've sold for i've seen god accelerate it it really don't make sense god in the spiritual realm i don't believe that seeds have a gender they have a name when you sow and you open up your mouth you give your seed that definition and so when you release your seed don't just sow for the sake of sowing say god i'm sowing into my family i'm sowing believing god for this for this and that and I believe that the God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think will do that in your life today. So please, the giving options are over here on the screen. And while we're sowing, I'm going to have Esther just worship for us again. How many of you were blessed by her ministry? Come on, y'all sound like you're in the Catholic church. How many of you were excited? Excited! 
I, I, I love Jesus. And so you see my excitement in my tone. And I'm praying that we, God raises a generation that they're, they're not just excited when whiskey comes to London or when Burner Boy comes to London, but they're excited for revival. Esther, please bless us. Amen. So we lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. So we lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. So we lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh. So. mic is broken. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> um, so yeah, we just wanted to explain that the plug um, is not yet a charity. Um, so this is why uh, Timothy's um, cash app, PayPal, um, bank and sort code is on here. Um, the money for tonight going towards the building um, and also uh, to some of the musicians. Um, we're going to be using some of the offering to help pay that off and the rest will be going literally towards um, uh, Sarah and her ministry. This event, like we've literally just put it on to raise an offering for this crusade. Um, so we ask, please, if you have cash, um, you can also make a cash donation. Um, but please, um, if possible... I think we're going to go around with some envelopes with Cansola, if you could help um, Prophet Timothy to hand out some envelopes for cash donations. And if you can, uh, we ask that you would please partner with this vision, with this mission, with what the Lord has uh, entrusted Sarah to do. Um, and so we have cash up, PayPal, and also <coughs> bank details. If there's any issues with the PayPal, uh, please let us know and um, we'll be able to serve you at the back. So, thank you. Thank you. 
want to, first of all, thank God for what He is doing here. Thank God for what. Can we clap for the Lord real quick? Jesus showed up. He showed up in me. He's changed my heart. You know, He's healed my heart. And I'm sure He's done the same with many of you here. But before we close, I know Nia Suri is going to close. I just really want to honor uh, Nia Suri's prophet at uh, Nia Suri's. And um, I call you Apostle. <laughs> but I know, I know you're a prophet as well. But I said, Prophet Timothy, if you can come up here, please. I want to honor you guys. I want to honor you. Will you clap? Will you stand up? Stand up for them. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. We want to honor these people. And I want to tell you something, and I've said it to Nia Streets before. Whenever the Lord gives me something to do, he puts prophets in my life. I've told her that. This is not a coincidence. I'm so honored. Actually, you know, the Lord spoke, the word that he spoke to me was, okay, as I asked him, how am I going to do this? He said to me, collaboration. You guys have been an example of that. I honor you. I honor you for putting this on in three days. I honor, <laughs> I honor what you have done. And I'm just so grateful for these men and women of God. And, you know, when you guys, when I saw you together, I, I saw, I, I felt, or oh, I saw the word unit. You work really well together. You, 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 you work really, really well together. And I, I, I'm just so thankful, Timothy, that you are uh, secure in who you are, that you, this woman is flourishing. And because she's flourishing, you're also flourishing. So can we stretch our hands and just pray for them? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless this man and woman of God, Lord. We bless these prophets, oh Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in their lives. We thank you for what you're, where you're taking them to. And Lord, as they've sown into Light UK, as they've given their sweat unto Light UK, Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do in their ministry. We thank you for their serving gifts. We thank you, Lord, that they've been an example of what collaboration is. In the name of Jesus, Father, they saw the vision and they've cast themselves. They've cast the net and they're the first ones to step in. And Father, I thank you that this is the beginning of the collaboration that Timothy is talking about, that the church is going to participate in. In the name of Jesus, Gina, I want you to come and just prophesy quickly over them in Jesus' name. And then Timothy will close. And I just bless this mighty uh, man and women of God, Lord. I just bless them. And you know, as Sarah was praying, I just saw just this, um, just the hand of the Lord over you. And just the, just the, just the, this is like a unit that he is, he is building and forming. And I just see, just God, just, um, just, just forming your calling and your, um, what he's planned and purposed for you. And Lord, I just, I just bless them. I just bless them. I bless their ministry. I bless what they're stepping into. I bless their feet. I bless their hands. And I bless what you're going to do, Lord, what you're going to do. I thank you for that you're going to use them for revival in this land and in the nations. And I thank you, Lord, that, that you're going to send them to nations to prophesy over the land and to prophesy to nations and to call forth the will and plan of the Lord over nations. I bless them. I bless their finances, Lord. I thank you for the finances, God, for a building, for the plug. I thank you, Lord, <laughs> for the finances, for a building, for the plug, God, and what you're going to do through, through, through the plug in the nations, in the nations. Thank you, God. Amen. you so much we are so blessed and um, it's actually and I actually love serving the body of Christ so much probably sometimes at my detriment <laughs> um, but I am so blessed to have been able to uh, do this as small I know that I could I I've seen the work that Sarah and the team have been have put in and I I knew that I couldn't give everything because of my capacity but what I could do I wanted to try to do my best to do that 
So uh, thank you, Sarah, for entrusting me with this. And I'm so excited for this crusade. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for praying. The leaders needed prayer just as much as our nation needed prayer. Because the, the, the grace of God on their shoulders to do it, to carry out what needs to be done. We need to pray for those leaders. So thank you so much for coming tonight. And I want us to just simply have a closing prayer and we'll go off on our way. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you that you are celebrating and you are in excited expectation for next week. Lord, we praise you and we say, Lord, have your way in the UK. Have your way in this nation. Thank you, God, for the souls that have even been released as we pray. And we will not understand until we get to the other side of eternity. We give you glory. May people get home safely in the name of Jesus. We come against any counterattack. And we declare we are covered in the blood of Jesus. Father, we praise you. We love you. And we're excited for what you will do through us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone, for coming together. The service is closed. And... Uh...